With the Mavic 3, DJI introduced a big camera sensor and other pro features to a relatively small drone. Now it has brought much of the same technology to an even tinier drone, the Mini 3 Pro. It's more capable on paper than the Mavic Air 2, but is less than half the size. It weighs under 250 grams, but can detect obstacles all around and packs a sensor larger than most smartphones. Unlike the Mini 2, it has 4K at 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second HD. Plus, many of the AI features found on the Mavic 3, like active track, quick shots, and master shots. At the same time, it's far more maneuverable than the Mavic 3 and introduces an optional remote with a built-in screen. The Mini 3 Pro costs between $670 and $910 though, so it's one of the most expensive lightweight drones out there. To see if it could justify that price, I took it for a spin with help from my drone pilot friend, Samuel Dejour. The key selling point of the DJI Mini 3 Pro is the size. It weighs 249 grams, so it's portable for travel, adventure activities, and more. And as it's under 250 grams, you don't have to register it or have a pilot's license in the US and other countries. The standard battery delivers up to 34 minutes of flight time, according to DJI. Running it to exhaustion, we saw about 30 minutes max, and the return to home warning started after about 25 minutes. With a drone so light, those numbers depend heavily on wind and other factors. If that's not enough, DJI offers the optional Intelligent Flight Battery Plus that boosts endurance to 47 minutes max. However, DJI notes that the higher capacity battery isn't available in the EU and other regions due to local regulations. Helping that endurance is a new aerodynamic body design that tilts when flying forward to reduce wind drag. It also allowed DJI to use bigger propellers to increase propulsion efficiency. The Mini 3 Pro detects objects in front, behind and below. That's key for mountain bikers and others who might want to film their adventures in tricky environments like forests. DJI claims its 1080p OcuSync 3 RC video transmission works over 12 kilometers, but you'll need direct line of sight to achieve that. As usual, videos and photos are saved on micro SD cards and there's a small 1.25 gigabytes of internal storage. The camera gimbal tilts down 90 degrees and up 60, more than double the Mini 2 and Mavic Air 2. The higher upward angle makes it useful to capture dramatic shots of buildings, cliffs, and so forth. The camera has a relatively large 48 megapixel 1 by 1.3 inch sensor, bigger than the one on the iPhone 13, and only about 40% smaller than the DJI Mavic 2 Pro's 1 inch sensor. It offers dual native ISO for improved HDR and low light sensitivity, and a 24 millimeter equivalent f1.7 fixed aperture lens. As with many smartphones, you can shoot high-res 48 megapixel images or combine four pixels into one for 12 megapixel photos with improved light sensitivity. Video specs are impressive for a small drone too. 4K and 2.7K are supported at up to 60 frames per second, or you can do 1080p at 120 frames per second. It has a two times digital zoom for 4K and four times for 1080p. Another cool trick is true vertical video mode for social media sharing. To maximize quality, the gimbal physically turns the camera sideways for both video and photos, maintaining the same resolution. If you'd rather not use a smartphone and the usual DJI RC-N1 remote, you can get the Mini 3 Pro with a new RC remote that has a built-in screen. It looks and feels cheaper than DJI's $1,100 RC Pro and the display isn't as bright or crisp, of course. But it's large, lightweight, bright enough, and extremely convenient. It just makes shooting that much easier and more fun when you don't have to pull out your smartphone and then connect it to the controller. Unlike the RCN1 though, it has separate triggers for photos and video. Hitting each of those triggers will change the mode automatically between video and photos, which is very convenient. It also has two dials now instead of one, with the first one tilting the gimbal and the second one controlling the zoom. The joysticks are stowed underneath and it has USB charging and host ports along with a micro SD card slot for screen recording. Overall, it's a nice and overdue addition to DJI's remote RC lineup.
One big complaint with the Mavic 3 was that many key features like Active Track weren't available on launch. Luckily, I was able to test nearly every function on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Since it's small and looks very maneuverable, the first thing we wanted to see was the APAS4 obstacle detection and active track following. To do that, we grabbed a mountain bike and headed to a forest, pitting the Mini 3 Pro against a Mavic 3. As we expected, the Mini 3 Pro destroyed the larger drone. It followed Nathaniel with greater agility, avoiding nearly all trees. Only once did its sensors miss a small branch, but the minor crash didn't cause a scratch. That's another benefit of a small drone. They're less likely to be damaged in an accident. The Mini 3 Pro also acquitted itself well in various quick shots and master shots scenarios, avoiding obstacles like a roof. Those functions designed to automatically give you some cool shots to share on social media all worked flawlessly, though quality is limited to 1080p. When it comes to image quality, the news is mostly good. By and large, video was sharp and color accurate, what you'd expect on a good smartphone, but not the same caliber as a mirrorless camera or the Mavic 3, of course. However, the automatic mode tended to overexpose bright objects, so I had to futz with settings to reduce that. It does offer a fully manual pro mode for both video and photos to control color balance, shutter, ISO, and more. However, most users likely will leave it in automatic mode and tweak the exposure compensation settings when needed. It's nice to have 60 frames per second at 4K to get smoother video with fast moving subjects. The addition of true 120 frames per second slow-mo at 1080p is also a great option for birds in flight, for example. However, keep in mind that active track, quick shots, and other features don't work in those modes. Movie files are limited to 8 bits of color depth, 420 sampling, and a 150 megabit per second bit rate. So there's not a lot of room to adjust exposure afterwards. There's no log setting either, though it does offer a Cine Look D mode that helps boost dynamic range a bit. As with any smallish sensor, low light sensitivity is decent but not great. Shooting over a brightly lit town, the Mini 3 Pro video was far less clear than a similar scene shot with a Mavic 3. The low bit rate and lack of 10-bit color depth didn't give me too many options to fix it later, either. Unlike with video, you can fix over or underexposed photos if you use the raw DNG format. The 48 megapixel images are very sharp and with the binned 12 megapixel mode enabled, raw images retain extra detail in low light. Though image quality isn't perfect, it helps to remember that this is a $1,000 lightweight drone. It beats all other models in that category and it's better than many heavier drones too. DJI's Mini 3 Pro is the new king of the lightweight drones. It's well suited for adventure sports, nature, hiking and more, thanks to the impressive tracking and obstacle avoidance. Image quality might not be good enough for some pros, but it's perfect for rugged activities and even suitable for paid gigs like weddings, events and more. Samuel, who does exactly those types of things, thinks that the Mini 3 Pro and a Mavic 3 is a killer combination. Its main competition is the $900 Hotel Evo Nano Plus, currently the best lightweight drone available. It has a similar 48 megapixel 1 by 1.27 inch camera sensor, three-way obstacle avoidance, subject tracking, and more. However, battery life is only 28 minutes. It's limited to 4K 30p with no 120 frame per second option and doesn't offer a remote with a screen. With DJI's better name recognition and marketing punch, the Mini 3 Pro is likely to grab more attention. Luckily, anyone who buys one won't be disappointed. It's now available starting at $670 or $910 with the RC remote. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. And for more on technology, check out Engadget.com.